In this episode, we'll be demonstrating a food preservation technique that is really meant to show historical methods, but is not meant to meet modern food safety standards. I'm here with Dan Wowak of Coal Cracker Bushcraft, and uh, we've been talking a little bit about, well, a lot about Nicholas Cresswell's journal. Nicholas Cresswell was a young Englishman. He was touring North America looking about what his future life was gonna be like. He's wondered if this was where he wanted to settle. And he, he had some adventures in the back country. And let me read this particular journal entry, and we're gonna to try to reproduce this. Uh, this is May 18th, 1775, and he's probably in what is now Kentucky. He says, all hands are employed in curing our buffalo meat, which is done in a peculiar manner. The meat is first cut from the bone in thin slices like beef steaks, then four sticks are stuck in the ground in a square form. Small sticks are laid on these forks to form a gridiron about three feet off the ground. The meat is laid on this and a slow fire put under it and it is turned until it is done. And then he says, this is called jerking the meat. That's what they referred to it during the time. Um, it answers very well, well where salt is not to be had and will keep a long time if it is secured from the wet. So does this sound like a typical you know, like cooking method you would do? Yeah, you're... so anytime you're gonna preserve meat, smoking's a great resource to do that, and you can use just about everything in the environment to help us get right. that and going. Right, he, and he describes a, a, exactly a, what a method just like we've kind of done a little bit earlier. So we're gonna reproduce that. What do we need for this? So we're gonna get the four sticks that have Ys on the top, so uh -huh. four sticks, and then we'll get a bunch of straight sticks that are going to create that grill top in a sense. Right. And then once we lay that over, we're gonna take it one step further though, we'll put a tripod over it and then wrap it with some extra material that we have here. And that's gonna help trap the smoke in and allow it to cure a little bit quicker. So I got our buffalo meat that we uh, cut up earlier. If you're gonna do try this at home, make sure to try to get this cut uh, across the grain as much as possible. Uh, this is regular buffalo and we're just gonna lay it out on our, our gridiron here. Have a, there you go, have a piece here. Some of these pieces aren't beautiful, but uh, you know, sometimes the buffalo fights you, so. Now we're smoking the meat, so we have the meat set on our rack that we built. What we're gonna do is take just an old scrap of cotton canvas, and we're gonna wrap it around this tripod. It's gonna help block that smoke. Right now, we don't have a lot of smoke, but we have a good bed of embers, so we can feed that with dry wood. We don't want a lot of flame and heat, so we'll feed that with not only dry wood, but then green wood, because that green wood's gonna give a nice smoke, and we really want this to get super smoky in here and dry this meat out. So we'll just take this old canvas and wrap it carefully around this tripod to start to trap in all that smoke. When you're doing this, you always also wanna be careful that none of this is down too low that it's gonna actually catch fire. So we can just fold that up the best we can. And that's gonna help trap a lot of that smoke inside to okay. dry out that meat. So let's get that fire stoked up and we'll be good to go. A lot of the skills that I've learned were passed on from many different individuals over the years. If it was not people who directly spoke with me, it's from their writings and teachings that they have written in books and journals. I would like to pass a lot of this information on to my son so he has a better understanding of what it took for individuals to come to this new land and prosper and make lives for them and their own families. Here is our dried buffalo meat, kind of smoked and dried. And this is what they would have been doing on the, on the trail uh, to preserve their buffalo. And, you know, Cresswell talks about this completely, it gives us this whole process. So we tried this out. It took longer than I expected. Uh, you know, we, we dried it for several hours and then we kind of basically had to let it go all night long before it really got nice and dry. And really what we're looking for is drying it, not cooking it. And you can see by these finished pieces, they're kind of black and they kind of crack open. They're, they're not real soft. If they're soft, they're gonna rot. And he talks about how if you keep them dry, they're gonna last a long time. Now, maybe for a long time for him was, you know, a couple of weeks or a month. But now the question is, what do we do with these? Now we can try eating these just like they are. Here you go, Dan, you, you give one, okay. get a try, pick one out there. Um, in, it, in this state, 
you know, it's tough, it's dry. It's meat. Yeah, it's if meat. If you're hungry, it'd be great. Right. It's good, definitely, I mean, with the buffalo meat, you get a little different flavor yep. than, than beef. Nicely smoked, though. Really got good a little, smoke flavor. A nice little smoke flavor to it. They wouldn't necessarily just eat it like this. So they might use this, reconstitute it in a stew, you know, put it in the, in the boiling water, kind of let it, you know, uh, uh, kind of reconstitute itself, expand a little bit. It's going to probably make a really, really interesting stew. Mix it with some of your other ingredients because you don't want to just be eating this on the trail all the time. You want to mix it up, right? Yep. And I think too, we need to realize that they were eating to survive. Yeah. So many times now we think about eating for pleasure where they were eating because they needed to eat to live. So something like this is a pure survival food. A lot of protein, a little bit of fat in there. It's yeah. great to get you through and get you to the next meal. Yeah, it gives time. you energy mm -hmm. and all that. Really, the kind of more fat, the better, really, in this yeah. kind of circumstance. Um, he, he even, you know, Cresswell talks about, he complains that these guys don't want to stick around to take the time to make these provisions, to dry this stuff out. But uh, if you have this dried, ready to go, when you're, you know, headed out to your uh, event, you can have this perfect uh, if you're doing something like Long Hunter where they would have had this sort of provision with them. So what would you need? A little bit of this? A little bit of flour or cornmeal and I think you really have a, yeah. a full setup of being right. able to go out and then hunt for the rest of your food, fish, and then have this as a backup. Right. So this has been such a really interesting experimental episode. We had a lot of fun with this. I wanted to thank Dan for coming along, showing us this system and coming in with the added uh, tripod over the top and holding that smoke in. A really interesting way of that really speeds up the process. Thank you, Dan. If you're interested in more of that, uh, you know, that uh, bushcraft and what, what else do you teach? So wilderness living skills in general, bushcraft, some survival, and we do all that at our school in Pennsylvania. All right, so if you're interested in more of that, make sure to check out his YouTube channel and we'll put a link to his school down in the description section. And I wanna thank you guys for all your amazing support with what you do, all the encouragement we get in the comment section when you share our videos, that's so important. Uh, some of you head over to the website and check out the merch or like the books, the Nicholas Cresswell book, that's on our website. You can check that out. I wanna thank you for all that you do and for coming along with us as we savor the flavors and the aromas of the 18th century.